Hi, my name is Daniel Pohl. I'm a research scientist at Intel. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about ray tracing and what I did in this area. So in 2004 I started with a project called Craig 3 Ray Traced from my university when I was a student for computer science. I reprogrammed the graphical part of the game and added a ray tracer to it. One of the fun scenes I did was uh, I added 23,000 spheres, all of them reflective, and what you can see and what is easily be uh, possible to do with a ray tracer are these multiple reflections in reflections as you can see in the video running now. Each reflection is really physically correct calculated through a physical formula. The programmer does not have to do much. The programmer only needs to specify those materials as reflective and the ray tracer itself handle also, handles also those multiple bounces. So after the Quake 3 project in the year 2006, I started working on Quake 4 Ray Trace, the newer game, as my master thesis. So Quake 4 has a lot more of special effects. You have bump mapping, you have specular mapping, uh, the geometry is more detailed, the textures are in high resolution, there's much more dynamics going on at the same time. So I developed around half a year on Quake 4 Ray Trace for this master thesis, and so Intel got notice of it and Intel is also researching on ray tracing. They were very interested in this project. So I joined Intel as a research scientist and here together with the good folks and the team we optimized the Quake for Ray Trace demo and for a primary ray, ray tracing demo we were able to achieve 90 frames per second and 1280 by 720 resolution. So we're really researching a lot in the area of ray tracing and we're trying to enable new special effects in games which would be very very hard to do with the traditional approach where they are done now. So for example reflections is one of the highlights you can easily do with ray tracing. Shadows are much more accurate. You can do soft shadows if you have enough calculation power. You can simulate glass with reflections and refractions. The same for water where you have reflections and refractions. You can add waves to the water and have the correct reflections on those waves and all these neat effects. This spider model for example is a totally reflective surface shader. Very interesting here is that the planes that fly above it you can see the reflection in the spider as it would happen in a real physical mirror. That's because we physically simulate those reflections. And if you look at some specific points of this video you can see that those reflections of the planes are almost everywhere. They are on almost every part of this leg. If you look close enough you can see them and that's the big difference between faking those reflections with some approximations which don't, do not react to dynamic reflections compared to the reflections we are doing which are every frame physically correctly calculated. Also here we have a scene with two spheres which have in between reflections, so you see reflections in reflections, including all special effects like shadows, like fog. In this example, we have a glass shader with correct reflections and correct refractions for a Snell term. So the formula is taken out of a physics book and we are simulating this physical behavior of the glass here. So in this scene, I put several tori and spheres together in one room made them all reflective and again you can see multiple reflections in reflections. Right now you're seeing coming up the back of the scene because it's reflected from this donut. Under this donut is a water surface also with reflections. What you can see now is the reflection of the tori in the water and again this reflection of it and so on. And again these things are very easy for developers. Just define the material properties and the ray tracer handles those bounces. It's interesting to note that even though we have so many reflections in reflections, it can still be efficiently calculated because the number of pixels that got reflected again decreases with, with each bounce of a reflection. So when we're coming to the third reflection, the reflection in reflection in reflection, we have maybe 10% of the pixels left, so 10% of the rays left that get reflected. So these kind of scenes can still be rendered efficiently with a ray tracing approach. Also in those Quake 4 demos we showed off a lot of shadow effects. For example, shadows walking up the stairs as you would physically correctly expect it if a light sort of circles around this person, then the shadow has to go correctly on these stairs. So ray tracing again this is very easy to implement for developers. What you also can do are portal effects where you can look into another physical area from the point where you're standing on. In ray tracing, you can do it with almost an infinite amount of bounce, so you can have portals in portals in portals and so on. 
and it does not cost so much on performance. Also for the programmer, again, these effects are very easy to implement. The portal just needs to be defined as a portal, and those multiple bounces are handled automatically by the ray tracer. Another topic is collision detection. So you can not only use ray tracing for rendering, you can also use the same rays to detect where are specific parts in the world, like how far away is this wall. You can measure it with a ray the distance and then determine if it's possible for the player to walk there or not. So it can simulate the collision detection of like guns or rockets flying in some directions through measuring the distance with a ray. Another nice special effect is this textured projected light where you see this textured color on the guy and the shadow cast on the wall. So here are some scenes from the latest Ray Traced game we made. That's Quake Wars Ray Traced, based on the original Enemy Territory Quake Wars released by id Software and Splash Damage in October 2007. What you see in this scene is water with reflections and reflections. You can see this part of the island is reflected, the sun gets reflected in it. We have waves in the water through bump maps. Another special effect we converted to ray tracing, which is not unique to ray tracing, but still interesting. And as a kind of proof of concept that you still can do so, is these force field effects, where you have different uh, noise functions mixed together with a texture look up, and then you have these kind of fancy force field effects. 